while we were there, we were able to actually be in three different schools, and we were able to have a Bible club in those schools. We preached in chapel at La Molina Christian School. Kyle preached at a middle school chapel, and I was able to preach at a high school chapel at La Molina Christian School. Then we did a, 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 it's called Oasis. It was an afternoon Bible club. We had a lot of fun there. We played some church camp games, and uh, we, we played some games there at the Oasis, and several of these young people taught Bible lessons. And I'm so proud of our young people and their work. Before we go any further, I do want to tell you that Kyle, this will be his last Sunday with us, and he is leaving to go back to college, and his last day would be Wednesday night. So if you see Kyle tonight, I will cry on Thursday because Kyle was like my right arm uh, in everything I did this summer. And I appreciate his faithfulness, his willingness to just jump in on all of these tasks and be right here with us. So this is the part that makes them a little nervous, and it makes me real happy to make them nervous. And so uh, I'm going to have Kevin Austin come first, and they're going to share just some of their experiences, what God showed them or what God taught them there in Peru. One thing I did want to make mention of is if you remember the picture of Alex, remember a picture of myself and Alex, not long ago, the church voted, the Gospel Light Baptist Church in Manchai, Peru, voted to take on Alex full-time as a full-time youth pastor. And so he's working in many different public schools in that community, handing out gospel tracts, organizing youth outreach. And after we were there, they're going to have a Bible club every Saturday to reach boys and girls in that community. Lima has over 11 million people in it. And the city of Manchai we served in had over 400,000 people in it with like a two-lane dirt road in and out. And there's over 400,000 people there in uh, Manchai, Peru. But I appreciate the opportunity to go and to lead the group. And I'm thankful for them and their, their hospitality, their unity, uh, their togetherness, their faithfulness. And uh, I appreciate so much being uh, able to lead this group. All right. Thank you. Well, um Thank you all once again for, like David said, to reiterate what everyone did to help us go on this trip. It was surely, surely was a blessing to me, and I know everyone that was on it, and I know a lot of you got blessings back here for helping us do that. So uh, I wasn't sure I was going to get to go on this trip up until uh, back in the uh, winter. I was having some health problems in my, so my foot and my stomach, and, and this was going on for months and months, and, the, and the, date, the date to leave was getting near, and I even went to Brother David, and I said, David, I said, you got to tell me the last cutoff date here because I said, I'm... I'm getting concerned here, and you know we talked about it, and um, but you know I, several people told me, and and I, I was having trouble just putting faith in the Lord, and finally I just turned it over to the Lord and said, you know what, it's just it's in your hands, and it was, you know everything was was great. I was able to go, and didn't have any trouble while I was there, and um, uh, he even took care of the menu for us. We had a lot of rice, which was good on my stomach, and we <laughs> ate so much rice that I don't think none of us want to eat rice anymore. But um, except, it, Locke. except Locke, Locke likes his rice and noodles, so. Uh, but it was uh, it was truly a blessing uh, to get to do. I was so proud of the, of the teen group that I mean you, you would just you would be so proud of the way their demeanor and the way they were uh, presented themselves wherever we went. They were just they were just uh, just a perfect perfect group. Um, it was just they were just spectacular to be with, and uh, I can't be even prouder of you guys. So some of them I don't know very well, but some of them I do, and and uh, they were they were really a blessing. Um, and Kyle. If it wasn't for Kyle, I don't know what, I'd have been in a lot of trouble because I'd get to talking to people in my Spanish. I don't know any, I know enough Spanish to get me in trouble, but Kyle was really a blessing to, to, to be with us. But one thing that I wrote, that stands out to me other than the, the humbleness of seeing how uh, the Peruvians, you know, how they live, a lot of them are, you know, is, is it, it, when you get back here, you really see what you have and you, you, it just puts it in perspective of how much we do have and, and how much we don't need. And it's just very humbling. But uh, on Wednesday night, church service I was paired with a guy to pray and although I couldn't speak his language and he couldn't speak my language we were both praying to the same God and um, and he wanted to say something I want to say something to him so we got an interpreter to come there and and I was telling him it was you know I'll probably never see you his name was Percy and I said Percy I'll probably never see you again on on this um, on this earth but I know I'll get to see you one day in heaven and he and he responded and he said yeah and we'll speak the same language so that was that was something that really that really stuck out to me but uh, once again I appreciate appreciate everyone's prayers while we were there and, and all you did to, to help support this trip thank you um, hello I'm Lakin I'm Anna um, the Lord really worked in my heart on this missions trip to be more thankful for what we have here. Um, even the smallest things we take for granted, we have a lot. Um, we have 
a lot more opportunities here than they have there with their jobs and all of that. Um, and um, one of my favorite memories we ha I have from Peru was going to the children's home. It's um, really a blessing to see what a wonderful place they have to stay. Um, so I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to go on this missions trip, um, and I'm so thankful for the group that I was able to go with. Um, they made it a lot of fun and really enjoyable, so thank you. And um, so the thing that I think God allowed me to realize is that um, we all need to be more grateful for everything we have here because in Peru they don't have all the conveniences that we do and um, even the smallest everyday things that we have they don't have so we shouldn't take it for granted um, and then one of my favorite memories from Peru was um, the Sunday when we were there we um, I got to help in the nursery at the Dasso's church and then we got to go to the children's home and it was just a blessing to see all the kids just playing and having fun um, we thank you again for all of your prayers, support, and donations, and for allowing us to serve the Lord in Peru. Amen. First off, I want to um, start by saying thank you to everyone who gave and prayed and were able to make this trip possible. The trip was definitely one of my best, and I will never forget it. The thing I loved most about the trip was being able to pass out tracts and all the people to all the people there. It was such an encouragement to see how people would just take the tracts and start reading them. It's amazing to know people in Peru have at least heard about Jesus. I continue to pray that the Lord does great things in Peru and for the family. Becky mothered us all while we were there. They didn't take much mothering, so <laughs> they didn't need much. No, I want to thank everyone for praying for our family, our group, uh, us as individuals on the trip. Uh, it meant a lot uh, to know that someone back here was praying for us on this trip. Um, thank you all for your support and for your prayers. Uh, but someone else we really... need to thank is David you know he made sure that we got where we needed to be he made sure that we were all safe uh, and the amount of planning that it must have taken for this trip uh, you know is has to be phenomenal uh, but everything you know went off without a hitch and how blessed we are to have David here yep uh, you know, when you go on these trips, uh, you know that the, go the good Lord is going to work in your heart, and you know that he is going to do things, uh, but you don't always know how, uh, and you expect to be blessed by things, and you expect to for your heart to be changed, uh, but I want to tell you how the Lord able to work in my heart and it all had to do with a mop or the lack of uh, when we moved out everything out of certain buildings in, at the at the church and the kitchen and the office and the girls painted now if you all ever want a recommendation for a painter I can tell you which ones can paint <laughs> and I can tell you a few <laughs> others <laughs> but there are a few good painters in this group I will tell you uh, <laughs> uh, some of them came back with gray hair did y'all notice that when they came back uh, but we moved everything out and the girls painted and when we got ready to move everything in I asked the ladies of the church for a mop now at my house a mop is very important very important at my house uh, but these ladies, and let me tell you, these were the sweetest ladies, you know, that they were just so loving to us, so sweet to us, uh, you know, they welcomed us with open arms. And I asked, said, if I could have a mop, I'll mop the floor, because that's what you do, right? You mop it before you move back in. Well, they didn't have a mop. 
uh, they had never had a mop. They, you know, and so I spent the rest of that day worrying about these ladies not having a mop. And that night, as I was worried about this mop, and all the things that these people did not have, that we have. The good Lord said to me, it don't matter. You know, they are going to be in the same mansion in heaven that we are. They don't need your mop. You're the one that is worrying about a mop. Uh, you're the one that's worrying about material things and that I need to stop worrying so much about the material things of this earth and whether we live in Lima, Peru or we live in Chilihaui, the most important thing is for people to have Jesus in their heart and they will have that magic forever. Thank you. Um, one, I want to also thank you guys for all your prayers and all the um, support you gave all of us uh, to go on this trip. Um, I can really say that the Lord worked um, in my heart, I know, and uh, just in the group every day of the trip, you know, from the day we left to the day we got back, he was there, um, and you could tell uh, that he was, you know, the just him being there and uh, helping us be safe and all these things, you could just tell he was there, but... Um, and I could stand up here and, you know, tell you everything he did every day, you know. But a couple of the things that um, really stood out to me was um, the first day after, the, well, I guess the second day when we were uh, in the city looking, um, kind of sightseeing and stuff like that. It was when we started uh, first giving out tracks. And um, I can't remember who exactly said it, but they said, um, well, you know, once you give them that track, and they are really receptive, uh, they'll just take what you're giving them. Uh, you know, whether they read it once or read it a bunch of times, you've, you know, you've given, given that to them, and it's changed their life already, you know. Uh, they know what it says. And uh, that really spoke to me because, you know, you see them and, like, some will read it or some will just put it in their pocket, and it kind of worries me. You know, I, I, want, I really hope you read it and take it to heart. But um, the Lord and uh, kind of just showed me that, you know, you, you already so um, planted a seed there and that you would you know, you've changed your life, uh, or the Lord has changed your life, uh, whether or not you know it. Uh, so that really spoke to my heart and encouraged me, you know, giving out the tracks. Uh, it can be kind of scary, you know, there's a ton of strangers you don't know, you're just giving them a piece of paper, but uh, after that, whoever said that, you know, that really encouraged me to just give out as many as I could. Um, and then another thing was just, uh, you know, during the services that we had there, you know, it was sometimes kind of difficult to understand, you know, with the translator. Uh, it was just, you know, back and forth, back and forth, but um, the Lord really spoke to me about he's the same God, you know, here as he is there. He's the same God everywhere, and um, that's what, you know, he's going to work in everyone's lives. Um, I had, during that prayer service, um, I was with uh, Brother Alex's wife, the youth pastor's wife, and um, she was, through the through the translator, was telling uh, me and Dana about her needs, um, and they had her prayer request, um, and she shared that with us, and um, the Lord just really put that on my heart to pray for her um, and what she needed. And um, it just really uh, showed me how powerful God is. You know, a lot of times uh, I just don't realize how big um, he is and how much he does. And uh, it just really showed me that he is powerful and he can do anything and that uh, he's the same God everywhere. So that's what really encouraged me. And um, just the Lord just really worked in my heart on this trip. And I just want to thank you again for all the support you gave us. Um, it was a really good trip. Amen. All right, Bud will come along, and then anyone after after Brother Bud, anyone that'd like to give a testimony, uh, feel free. And then uh, then we'll turn the service over to Pastor Cody. Look around this building right here, our beautiful sanctuary. If you noticed, they don't have a church building. You meet outside, and so never complain again that it's cold in here because it's very cold. <laughs> in Lima, Peru, when the sun went down. And man, Chai, I told Jamie Sunday night, he's going to have to preach really, really fast. Sunday morning, Cody, I was feeling good about myself. I was preaching. Stacy was interpreting. About halfway through, I had a German shepherd at the altar. I'm telling you, I was feeling good about that sermon right there. <laughs>
first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for supporting us on this trip. It was amazing what God can do and will do through you all helping us to be in Peru to talk to these Peruvians to hand out, to hand out the literature and to see how they live and how it humbled me to be there knowing that we how much we have it made here. But God is good. Either way, we see it, no matter our skin color, our language. He loves us all regardless of that. Thank you. Well, I just want to say a couple of takeaways from this trip. Um, I was the, uh, this is my first youth missions trip. And I don't know how it worked out, but I was not only the oldest youth there, I was the oldest person there. And that, that's unique for me. That's the first time that's happened. But um, first of all, I want to say um, that uh, David was extremely organized, as, as uh, Becky said. And uh, we were never in doubt as to what was next. And um, uh, I had no idea that he was truly a, a professional driving instructor. That uh, our, our bus driver, Antonio, wonderful Christian man, spoke not a word of English, and David didn't let that stop him at all for giving driving suggestions. <laughs> when to downshift, when to pass on the right. The drivers there are incredibly aggressive, and uh, Antonio would just look over at David and just smile and keep on going. <laughs> but uh, here at church, we, we teach the children here a song uh, the, um, about obedience. And, um, and one of the lines in that song, it says, doing exactly what the Lord has said and doing it cheerfully. Isn't that it? Or happily. And that's, in a nutshell, what these youth showed, not just myself, but everyone there that we came in contact with. Uh, no complaining, no fussing, no uh, strife within the group. And uh, one day we went to, a, and I don't think this was scheduled, but we went to a, a fairly new Christian school in Manchai, or it was close to Manchai, and we, we helped uh, do some cleanup work out in a vacant lot that's going to be used by the school in the near future. And I mean, it was picking up trash. That's basically what it was. And every one of the kids there, without one word of complaint, they had smiles on their faces. It was not pleasant weather, but boy, they hung in there and we got that place cleaned up in no time. And again, that's my biggest takeaway. I would be honored to go on a mission trip with any of these young people, anywhere, anytime. It really blessed my heart to be part of it. And thank you all. Okay. I get up here for two reasons. Oh. Cody hogs this all the time, man. You don't ever get an answer to this. So I'm going to glean on this just for a minute and rub on it. And tell her it's all right. She beats on him. And, uh, but we had a good time in Peru. I tell you, the greatest testimony I took back from Peru was not how receptive the Peruvians were for the gospel, the tracts. Uh, uh, the teens and adults handed out the tracts. They were great, uh, receptive people. They would take it. I think we only met one person that denied it. Um, but everybody would take it. You'd look down the corner, and uh, they were reading it. They were enjoying the message, whatever uh, they were given, and it was a blessing. Uh, seeing Peter hand everybody fireballs, they don't have the hot things there. And Peter went through the government uh, officials, handing out fireballs. We went back the next day, and they were waving at us, and I thought, man, Peter's got, got us arrested in Peru. We're in trouble. Um, uh, you know, to see them rich in poverty, I could say the testimony about that. Um, they don't understand what poverty is and how they take care of their kids and how they show up and they walk five or six miles for church and sometimes we won't even get in the car and go uh, 20 feet to the car and get in to come to church and they come with a smile on their face. And, uh, but the greatest testimony I took of Peru is, is these youth and the, the unity they have together. You know, a lot of times we set up here on uh, Sundays and Wednesdays and, and we don't really know what's going on downstairs. We pray for them. 
and we encourage them. But I can tell you that David, uh, through the leadership of David and uh, the pouring out of uh, David and Patty, uh, they've made a great investment in our youth. Uh, when they went over there, I'm telling you, it was so peaceful. We, in the airport, it was stressful. Um, it was uh, a high tense. <laughs> Keep, let me rephrase that. Keeping up with David and keeping David calm in the airport was stressful. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but the teens, the youth, all of them come together. And, and you know, there's a principle in RU. It's number six. Uh, every one of us can take something from it. It's those who don't love the Lord will not help you serve the Lord. But the opposite side of that one is those that do love the Lord will help you serve the Lord. Uh, there was no crosswords. Uh, when you gave them a job or they, somebody asked something out of them, they always went to do it. Uh, it was, I'm telling you, it was a true blessing and a testimony of Chilhowee Baptist Church and the investment this youth group's had in it went to Peru and it, it shined. I can tell you, the gospel of Jesus Christ shined through their testimony day in and day out. And uh, it made a big impact on my life to say, listen, there is a younger generation coming up uh, that wants to serve the Lord and that is encouraged to serve the Lord through the church. And I, I tell you, we need us to continue uh, encouraging them, stand behind them, uh, praying for David and Patty as they, they teach and reach the youth. Because I can tell you in RU ministry, when you see a, uh, somebody drop out or you see somebody not come back or they fall and make a mistake, the old adversary tells you he wants you to quit and just give up. Why would you make that investment? But I can tell you, uh, David's just continue going on. If one quits, he's praying for him, reaching for him, but he's not giving up on, giving up on the church and he's not giving up on the people. And uh, it was a huge blessing just to go for those few days, even though David did measure wrong, and I had to put up with that the whole time. I'm telling you, it was a great blessing to be around those teens. We're going to buy him some how-to-do books on the building. Uh, but it, it was a great time. So thank you for the supporting us and encouraging us as we went. She trooped all over Peru right there, her uh, crutches. Well, I was very blessed to go to Peru. Um, everybody helped me along and helped me get along. And uh, I'm very blessed to go with this group. And this is my first mission trip. And I just loved all the kids there. It was, very, it was a very much blessing to me 